Hello photographers. I love using color gels for lighting. They add so much creativity to a shot. And if you're not already using color gels for your lighting, here are five tips to get you going. Tip number one, you have to control your lights. How your lights interact with each other is always important, but when using color gels with your lighting, it's even more important because the interactions will have a huge effect on how the color looks. Here's an example. Let's say you want to use a color gel to make a nice blue back background, and then for the subject, you want to use a non-gelled main light. If you do not control the spill from that non-gelled main light, it is going to wash out the color on the background. Or let's say you're using a color gel on the main light as well. Let's say red. That red would mix with that blue background, introducing some purple into the background. Now the fix for this is really simple. It's just a matter of modifying or flagging your lights to make sure that they only interact when you want them to. And it's not just flags. You can also use grids and snoots to control your interactions. Now tip number two is to watch for light leakage. This is related to the first tip, but it pertains to how you attach your color gels to your lighting. If you are using a system like the Magma or a reflector kit like this one, it's not really a problem. But if you do like I and many other photographers do, you're going to be affixing your color gels with gaffer's tape or Velcro or rubber bands. And when you attach your gels this way, they don't always perfectly cover the flash head. This can lead to ungelled light leaking out and contaminating your scene, washing out the colors and ruining the look that you're trying to create. And the fix for this is super simple. All it takes is a bit of gaffer's tape to seal up any gaps and prevent that light leakage. So tip number three is to double up your gels to make colors that you don't already have. Now, in all honesty, it's pretty easy and cheap to get a variety of gel colors, but this tip has saved my butt a bunch of times. If you find yourself short of a color, just mix the colors you do have to create it. For example, if you don't have a purple gel, you can double up a red and a blue gel to get purple light. And as a bonus tip, you can also double up the same color gel to increase the intensity of that color. Now, before we go over the last two tips, I wanted to take a moment and tell you about my understanding flash photography course. I know flash photography can be scary and you're obviously interested in flash since you're here watching this video. But here's the thing. Flash photography is actually easy. You just have to know how to think about it and how your flash works so that you can make it do what you want it to do. And this is exactly what you'll learn in my Understanding Flash Photography course. The course covers things like how your flash works and how it works with your camera and a whole bunch more stuff. So if you are struggling with your lighting, go check out my Understanding Flash Photography course at shpphoto slash flash. Now for tip number four, color gels for lighting are generally more effective with low key lights. If you're not familiar, low key lighting is lighting that predominantly features darker tones and shadows, whereas high key generally features bright tones and highlights. If you're using color gels with your lighting, it stands to reason that you want to see the color. And generally speaking, high key images will tend to wash away that color. Here's an example right here. Notice how the blue in the low key image has more presence and intensity as compared to the high key image. And that image isn't even particularly high key. But despite that, the brighter tones of the background diminish the intensity of the blue just by virtue of being brighter. And it is not the case that using color gels in your lighting means that you have to shoot low key. The key here is that you have to be aware of these interactions. And in this case, it's understanding how the key of your image will affect the way your colors will show up in that image. And finally, we have tip number five, which is that the brightness of your background will affect the intensity of your colors. And this will change how you have to set your light setting. This is a little bit confusing, but it is really important. So generally speaking, as you make a color brighter and brighter, it continues to approach the point at which it becomes so bright it is just white. And with a color gel on your flash, the higher the power is set, the brighter the light passing through the gel will be. And the brighter that light is, the closer the gelled color will be to white. Now that is true of the light itself, but that's not accounting for what the light is bouncing off of and how bright or dark that thing is. That will change how this works. So let's look at some examples. This image here was shot against a white backdrop. 
The light is just out of frame at camera left, set to one quarter power with a blue color gel. Notice how on the left of the image, where the light is the brightest, the blue is brighter and closer to white. And as the light moves across the scene, it loses power. So at the far right of the image, where the light is the least powerful, the blue is most intense. This is because the brighter the reflective surface is, the more light it will reflect. And the more light it reflects, the brighter it will be, moving the color closer closer to white. What this means is that against a brighter backdrop, if you want your colors to be more intense, you need to use lower power settings. That will reflect less light, allowing for more color intensity. Now next we have this image here, and the only thing I changed here was the backdrop. The flash is still at camera left at one quarter power, but now it's shooting against a black backdrop. And here the most intense colors are at camera left which is the brightest point in the image. And the further you move away from that point, the darker the color gets until eventually it goes entirely black. On a dark surface, much of the light is absorbed. And so at a low power, so little of that gelled light will be reflected that it just goes completely dark. What this means is that against a darker backdrop, if you want your colors to be more intense, you need to use higher power settings. That will reflect more light off that darker backdrop, increasing the intensity of the color. So there you have it, five tips to help get you started using flash gels. Now, if you have any questions about flash gels, let me know down in the comments. And my question for you today is this, it's real simple, what is your favorite color? Leave a comment down below and let me know. And don't forget to check out my Understanding Flash Photography video course if you're still struggling with flash. And then do me a favor and like this video and subscribe to my channel. But most importantly, you better get out there and take some damn photos.